All right, Coach, we got the first Periscope set of interviews I've done. It's been with the Buckeyes. Uh, we want to talk Buckeyes 2015, 2016. Uh, I, I see a ton of talent in the room, Coach. Super impressed. Uh, what are you looking for? You know, first off, today was a light day, a spar day. What are you guys looking for? You know, it's, it's October. It's not March. Yeah. What do you want to get out of a day like today? Just improve. Obviously, this is a positions day, a day of to work on positions. Uh, so they were on their own for an hour, obviously, with great leadership that we have within the program. It's nice when they have a chance to to spend their time on the things that, that they know they need the most. So uh, uh, yesterday was a really intense day. Um, you know, groups of three, lots of, you know, high, high intensity and today was the day to uh, really focus back on sparring, which we do a lot of sparring here. So it's good, good workout. You lose Logan Steber, you know, obviously four time national champ and it leads you to the team title as I'm looking at the banner above your head, yeah. which is pretty cool coach. Uh, you know, you, you got a world champion, Kyle Snyder, who's, who's doing the Olympic red shirt. Obviously, who do you look for, for to for leadership? Nate Tomasell is the NCAA champion. That's obviously someone, the guy is just like Energizer Bunny. I look at him. Yeah. And Bo, yeah. you know, what do you want out of these guys and how do they lead your your uh, your younger guys? Yeah, we're just, I mean, we're just really fortunate right now. I mean, we're just really fortunate. That there's, there's a lot of people that model the way here, right? There's no, there's no stronger way of making a difference than modeling the way. So you've got, you've got, Travell, who trains in the room, you've got, you know, JD. You've got uh, Logan is is going to be on staff next year, uh, and he's here training the Olympic team. You've got JD Bergman, Reese Humphrey. You've got Kyle Snyder, Nathan Tomasello. So there's so many good people that every day when you when you move into their their as a training partner with them, you're you're improving. So the leadership has never been stronger, and uh, so we're we're really happy with with you know where the culture is right now in, in, in the program. And looking at obviously, it's there's some guys who you know, they were great high school wrestlers. You got two three-time state champs, and you know, obviously Johnny DeJulius, yeah. and you've got Nick Tavanello. Those guys haven't they haven't got it done yet, Coach? What do you say to those guys? You have these young guys coming and have early success. What do you say to those guys? Those are two guys you know you need. They got to score points for no, you guys no, to, no, to repeat. No question. With the, with the with the amount of talent, look, every team has talent, right? There's, when you when you have 80 Division One schools. And you've got 10,000 high schools that have wrestling. I mean, there is there is talent everywhere. There are committed people in every program. So what's to separate, right? It's 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 following the people within your organization that do things the right way. So, uh, you know, Tav was wrestling really well last year. You know, it's January 11th. We're in a dual meet against Penn State. He's got the winning takedown against a heck of a competitor, a heavyweight as tough as that. He's going to win the match. They get in a scramble. He doesn't put his weight where it should be. Uh, he loses the scramble in the process. He, he literally had a season-ending injury, so he's out the rest of the season. We throw him in the Big Tens without any training, and that's what happens. The Big Tens is too competitive. So, so Tav had a great summer. He's ready to go. I mean, again, that's a guy that the year before was in the All-American round as a freshman. His past year struggled with with injuries. He just got to stay healthy, right? Um, Johnny DeJulius is up five-one. You got to win those matches. You're up five to one, and you get thrown for five with 20 seconds to go. It just, it just, it can't happen. It can't happen. So it's more focus in here. It's, it's eliminating, eliminating distractions. Listen, those two guys know that, uh, you know, you don't have to tell them for them to know that they're critical, right? They know it, you know, there's no sense in putting undue pressure on them. They, they, they know their role and they're working hard to make sure that they perform, you know, all year and then particularly well at the NCAA is big chance. Big question marks, 41, 49, yeah. 57. And, and it's like a, a kind of a plethora of guys I'm hearing. Yeah. First off, are you going to retro Keyshawn? What, what are you doing with Keyshawn Hayes? So look, everybody knows right now it's all hands on deck, right? I mean, the only person that we know certain that will not be in the lineup is Kyle Snyder. The best, we, we, look, the best thing for him was to not be in the lineup. Despite how bad he wanted to be in the lineup, how much he wanted to help the team, it just doesn't, it's, it, it's, it's not the best move for him. So uh, so in saying that, everybody else, Miles Martin, Keyshawn Hayes, Colin Moore, everybody knows that we're gonna put we're gonna put the best team on the mat this year. Assuming that that the individual that we put in there, if they don't have a red shirt, that we believe with, with good reason, with good evidence, that that they're a top three person, top five guy, potential NCAA champion, uh, then we put them in. If not, we don't. So can they make a difference in the score? If they can make a difference in the score, then you assess putting them in. If you're, if you're not sure, you wait. So there's a lot we're gonna learn about this team. You know, the, the, the cat's out of the bag with Micah Jordan. 
mean, Michael Jordan has come here to win. He wants to win four titles. His, his plan is to go 41. I mean, there's no question he's going to be a 41 pounder. So in saying that, you've got Keyshawn, who now is in a little bit different position than he was in. Right? Most likely, if we had nobody to go down, then Keyshawn's ready to step in. So Micah moves down. Hunter steps in second semester. We will not use him until second semester. So Hunter will step in second semester at 49. And 57, there's a bunch of guys that were fighting at the, at, at the weight. you got Bircher, you got my son Jake, and you've got, uh, you've got Justin Krasovic, who, who will move down from 65 if Bo moves down. The only reason why Bo is going to move down is if we see that Miles Martin can be effective at the weight. And effective for us is, is, is truly fighting for a national championship. Otherwise, uh, we, we hold tight and we, we insert you next year or the following year to 84. So there's a lot, I've never had a season, we, you know, we, 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 you're coming into the season and there's so many question marks. The good issue, the good, the good problem is that we got a lot of great guys, right? It's just, it's, just, it's, just, it's just getting them where we can score the most points. So it has nothing to do with daring or be at 65 and Bo going up to 74 and being the, the number one guy. Yeah. Does that have anything to do with it, Coach? Well, absolutely. I mean, we can pretend that it doesn't, you know, and why would he move up? Look, Bo's big. 65's not that easy to make. He can make the weight. But we're looking, you know, do you, we're not running from Derringer, but the bottom line is, as anybody would do, what, what is going to give you the best chance of, of, of winning? If you're going to go five, if, if you're going to beat Derringer five out of ten times, but there's somebody in a different weight class that you can beat nine out of ten times, what, what, there's, 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 an, there's an obvious decision there. Now, ultimately, the bottom line is how can Ohio State score the most points between two weight classes, 65 and 74? What gives us the scoring potential to score the most points? We believe that's a Bo Jordan, 65, Miles Martin, 74. But we're far from that right now. We're far from it. It's early in the season. We're getting better. We're assessing. We're going to go to some open tournaments, and we're going to see how guys look. The, the mix of three guys at 84, 97, you know, uh, Mark Martin's enormous. He's over 200 pounds. I couldn't believe it when I saw him. I was like, yeah. wow, you're big, dude. Yeah. Uh, you know, then uh, Colin Moore. I mean, I'm just really impressed with that guy. That's, yeah. the, big, that's the best guy in Ohio nobody heard of, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. He's incredible. Uh, and then, obviously, you got All-American, the guy who turned the corner last year, Kenny Quartz. Yeah. What do you do there, Coach? Well, so right now it's Kenny 84 and we're assessing 97. It's Kenny with challenged by Jack Rosema. So there's a lot of guys in here. You know, Ryan Harris is, is, is a good potential option for us in some way. Seth Williams, we got a lot of talent in here. You know, names that, you know, the, 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 the general fan right now may not know, but just tough guys trying to fight their way into the lineup. So right now, it's Quartz is the favorite, and Jack Rosema, who put in a great offseason, who trained hard with Kyle whenever Kyle wanted to, has made some big jumps. So right now, that's looking like 84. 97, you got either Colin Moore or Mark Martin. So we're looking at both of those guys. Obviously, Mark has a red shirt. Colin has a red shirt. Uh, you know, we want to put the guy in there that's going to score the most points. So we're going to we're going to we're going to watch him. Haynes Tavanello. Haynes Tavanello. You know, Haynes is. I mean, Haynes is a is a, is a was a tough hombre in, in high school. You know, he came in with, with highly recruited, and he just has not to this point been had the health that you need to make games. Nobody gets better sitting on the edge of the mat, right? So nobody gets better sitting in the bleachers. So, so Thomas has been healthy. Uh, he's, he's, you know, was unhealthy last year, so it was a setback for him last season. He didn't compete all year. It's the first time since he was a little kid he didn't compete. So there's a little step backward, but right now is, he's looking really good. He's coming on strong. He's, he's doing the things he needs to do. And, you know, you eat the, you eat the elephant one bite at a time. He's taking a bite every day, and he's, he's improving. So, uh, you know, right now I'd say, you know, tab slight advantage, but we're far from wrestle offs, and it's a long season. Looking at, uh, you know, you have a number six ranking. The Flow Wrestling rankings have you at number six. Do you feel uh, a little slighted by that, or do you feel that's appropriate? No, I don't feel slighted. You know, honestly, we don't really. I mean, I mean, look, we, you, you want to be. It's nice to be ranked one, but at, at, you know, I believe, like I believed last year, that we have the people that can defend our national championship, right? But, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, we're just focused on. Seriously, the rankings do not impact how we train. Right? The only thing that impacts how we train, how guys are feeling, what's the best thing for them, how can we put them in the best position to be successful. So that's what we focus on. You know, we focus on improving. We focus on getting stronger. We focus on positions that we need to you know, get better at. So you know, it's just it, those things, rankings don't really. They don't concern you? They, they don't concern us, no. Okay. 
Now, at the end of the season ranking, we... Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. You were, you were one, number one last yeah, year at the end one, of the season. Yeah, at the end of the season ranking, that's the one that we, we're, we're going to look at. All right, Coach. I know you got some recruits yeah. on campus. You can't really mention names, but mm -hmm. uh, recruiting is the name of the game. Yeah. How important is it that you guys get the thoroughbreds that you get? Well, it's, it's critical. I mean, it's, it's critical. It's critical you get thoroughbreds. It's critical that you get... Look, we know we know this. There's four quadrants, right? This, you, have, you, have, you, have, you, have, you have character, right? You have, you, have, you, have, you, have, you have character and you have talent. Right? You have character slash work ethic and you have talent, right? High talent, low character, low work ethic, low work ethic they don't, they're, they're not going to make it at this level, right? We, we know the Navy SEAL system. We know the SEALs work. We know what they're looking for. We're looking for the same thing the SEALs are looking for. We're looking for people that have incredible character, incredible work ethic, and have some talent. They don't be through the roof talent, but we, those are the ones we want. Now, when you get a guy that's got high talent, high character, you've got to call a smile. All right, Coach, I'm going to cut you on this one. We'll keep going on the Periscope, right?